Welcome back to the course, Electrical Systems in Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering. This is lecture number 15, and the lecture will uh, be focusing on uh, lighting, okay? Lighting sources and lighting systems, uh, particularly for farm and uh, agricultural and biosystems structures. Uh, to start with, the topic will be on uh, light sources. And the very basic idea of lighting is to uh, configure the proper amount and kind of light in the appropriate places. And this is exactly what illumination is about. And to study uh, illumination, the objectives would be to uh, understand the basic concepts of lighting. Uh, number two is to understand the uh, different lighting design criteria. Number three is to uh, perform the uh, necessary computations uh, based on illuminance requirements with uh, specific methods in mind, uh, particularly the point and lumen method in this uh, course. And lastly is to be able to design uh, interior lighting systems based on this uh, requirements and computations. So we first discuss what, a, uh, what, what, what involves lighting. And we have here the concept of the luminaire, which is the lighting equipment that houses the light source okay, and connects it uh, to the um, power source uh, via electrical uh, connections. Let's talk about light. And what is this light that, that the, the human eye sees, okay? If, if you're going to uh, consider the, uh, nature prop the, the natural properties of light, which is well uh, taken from the electromagnetic um, um, uh, nature, it's electromagnetic nature, we know that the, it is part of the electromagnetic spectrum where we have the uh, radio waves and the X-rays okay, and the infrared and microwaves uh, consisting that uh, um, that spectrum. So where is this uh, light that we see, uh, the human eye see? And if you see, uh, if you look at the the diagram, we see the lights, the light that the visible eye. Can, uh, the, the light, uh, the eye can see, okay? the naked eye can see. So we have uh, this um, spectrum, part of the overall electromagnetic spectrum and consisting of what? The, the colors that the eye see from, um, or it's, it's Roy G. Biff, okay? Uh, reverse, in reverse. We can go um, pick these, but we just uh, set this diagram with the a uh, very small wavelength in the gamma rays to the left, okay, over here, okay. And we have the radio waves, which are uh, very long, okay, very long in wavelength to the farthest to the right, okay. They are over here, okay. I'm not sure what's so the right, right thing, so it's over here. Now, uh, the visible spectrum, which I see is over here. So uh, it, it's really a, a boon that what we see okay, is actually just um, in this portion, because what if we can see uh, infrared, okay? So, well, it could be um, different kind of eyes that we have, because the, the receptors and the eyes, you know, it's, it's the interplay of biology and, and, and physics actually. So maybe if, if you have um, the infrared, okay, uh, um, over here, okay, and if the eyes can can look at it, then we would have a different um, perspective of things. And well, uh, the colorblind people, they're actually at the um, well, the the biology, the failure of biology, okay. In the same way, uh, the, the other animals see things differently because they have different cones or the receptors in their eyes. And well, uh, we're discussing this because 
uh, the light that the the the, the uh, illumination concept will be working on will be based on this uh, certain spectrum of the like all, over all the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so we now move to the uh, types of light sources, and we start with the very basic or the first one that was introduced in 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 society. This, these are the incandescent lamps. Now, incandescent just well basically means the glow the glowing due to to heat or a very high temperature. Okay. Uh, the first commercial lamp was produced in 1879, uh, and it was generating 1.41 lumens per watts. This is the carbon filament developed by Thomas Edison. Now, only six to twelve percent of energy emitted by an incandescent lamp is within the visible range. So, what happens with the rest? They are in the infrared, okay? or, or uh, they are beyond what the eyes can see. Okay. Now, uh, we have also the fluorescent lamp, and this was developed in 1938, and is what is being commonly used nowadays. Okay. Later, we'll see the advantages and disadvantages of both. Uh, but before we do so, we look at the uh, development of the incandescent through the years, okay, from, from 1893 onwards. We have first the carbonized cellulose, cellulose filament, which was generating 3.3 lumens per watts, upper watt. And then we have the metallized carbon. We have also afterwards in 1906, the osmium and tantalum uh, filament. Okay. When we're talking about the filament, it's the um, the metal portion inside the uh, the filament or in in the the bulb. Okay, that's generating the uh, reaction between the the gas inside. Okay, when it's when when electricity is flowing. Then there's the pressed or squared uh, tungsten, generating seven point nine lumens per watt, and then we have the uh, master drawn tungsten wire type B with 10 lumens per watt in 1911. And then the, in 1915, the 500 and 300 and 100 watt sizes, okay, uh, generated 12.6 lumens per watt. In the 1990s, okay, we have the, um, the up to 26 lumens per watt of um, incandescent lamps. Next, we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of uh, the most common lamps that we use, okay? the fluorescent and incandescent. Now, the, um, the, the advantages of fluorescent, which is newer a newer technology compared to, incan to incandescent, is that it has two to three times um, lumens per watt wattage efficiency, OK? It also gives gives off less heat per lumen lighting, okay, and it produces less glare since the source is distributed over a larger area. And lastly, it has five to times uh, five to ten times um, better service life, okay, under ordinary operating conditions. It just so happens that okay, uh, in in fluorescent lamps, okay, uh, it has the ideal. Um, usage is to turn it on and off okay, um, in larger uh, durations or in longer uh, spans of time. Okay? Unlike in the incandescent, which you can turn and off, turn, turn on and off um, in, in very relative shorter periods. Okay? Uh, disadvantages of the fluorescent lamp is that it has um, temperature sensitivity. And it operates pro properly only in temperatures uh, that are greater than 10 degrees Celsius. Okay? And it requires protective enclosures with very high humidity environments. And it has lowered service life. Okay? Again, that's what I'm saying. So with increasing on-off cycles. Then the uh, um, performance factor is less than 1.0. And it has higher initial cost because, well, the incandescent lamps are cheaper. 
Next, we talk about the third source of light, okay? And these are the high intensity discharge lamps or HIDs. And there are three uh, groupings, okay, based on their com uh, composition or, or the make. Okay, we have the mercury lamps, we have the metal halides, and we have the high pressure sodium. Now, in table one, we have here the um, characteristic uh, specifications of the different HIDs. We have the initial lamp lumens, the ILL, which will be discussed you know, much later, and we have the initial efficiency, okay, lumens per watt, okay. Um, you have the lump lumen dep depreciation or the LLD, which is in percentage, okay, and it will be discussed much later. And we have the uh, rated life in Rs. How, how long is the lifespan of a certain HID? Uh, the uh, different lamps, okay, based on their categories are uh, indicated in uh, a column, okay. We have the mercury lamps, okay, and the high pressure sodium lamps and the metal halide lamps. If these are going to be used in computations, okay, this table would be very much uh, useful or very much, um, or comes very much handy in, in those computations, okay? Now, talking about the, um, the parameters to uh, define light sources, we have your lightning uh, light intensity, okay? And it represents the force that generates the visible light and is characteristic only of the source and cannot be perceived visually. This is in unit of candela or CD. Next is the luminous flux, okay? Now this is what is perceived, okay? By the eyes or this is in lumens and this is the time rate of flow of perceived luminous energy or luminous power. Now the illuminance is, uh, this is the lumens per m squared or the equivalent in English or the imperial units uh, uh, is, is foot candle or FC. And this is just the density of that lumens per a certain area, okay? This is the luminous power over the luminous flux over or, or the luminous flux over the unit area, okay? And this is the luminous power. So um, luminous flux over area is the illuminance E, okay? Now in, in certain applications in agricultural operations, there are uh, luminance illumination requirements and this would be what? This would be in terms of the lux of, uh, or the foot candle, okay? Uh, lux is what? It's lumens per m squared, okay? Now, here shown in table two are the illumination requirements of specific operations, okay? In a poultry production, um, uh, poultry production industry, in the, in the poultry production industry, okay? And these are required in terms of what? The, the people or the, the tasks in, in certain operations, like for um, brooding and production and laying houses, well, there is the need for uh, 200 lux when uh, there's feeding, inspection, and cleaning. It's activities that would not require that much uh, the ice, okay? without much use of the ice. Uh, because there is no that much detail in the type of work. But when you have uh, charting and recording, okay, for charts and records, we have also a reading of thermometers and thermostats and time clock or, or their um, checking or maintenance, then you would need 500 lux, okay? Now for feed storage, you have grain and feed rations and the processing, There, these are just um, requiring low uh, illumin uh, illuminance, just just two hundred lux. Okay, and then there's the con the 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 other operations of for hatcheries, for egg processing, for egg handling, packing and shipping, and lastly uh, the poultry processing or the broil or the dressing plant. Okay, 
uh, overall, okay, when there's the need for general lighting, there's it, it requires the highest of uh, illuminance at 1,000 lux because uh, it would involve, for example, in in egg handling, the cleanliness of the eggs or quality inspection. Okay, where there is a need for um, detail, the use of or, or looking the, the look or the looking for uh, details in a, in a, in operation that requires much of the eyes. There's a need for uh, general lighting or high illuminance. The equivalent foot candle rating is uh, to the right of the um, illuminance in lux, and this are uh, equivalent. Okay. Now in in here, okay, we see there's a third ten thousand um, requirement for sexing, and this is for the when you have very uh, important details in the determination of the sex of um, of of chicks. Okay, so you see if it's a male or a female, so that they can be uh, identified. So it requires a lot of light, and in here, ten thousand lux is required. Case that would be all in the next uh, discussion would be the computations and other uh, parameters for uh, illuminance and lighting. Thank you for listening.